Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Welcome. Good evening, and welcome to Strange Love Live Tech Edition. I'm your host, Cami Chaos. And I left the sound on on my computer. I think they're working on it. <laughs> Thank you. It's taken care of. With all this technology, we still have the computer sound going and going. Um, yes, welcome to Strange Love Live Tech Edition. I'm Kami Chaos. I think we covered that. As always, I'm joined by Dr. Normal. Hello. And this week, I'm joined by two of the members of Shazow, Don Foster and Ryan Snyder. Hello. Hello. Hey, everybody. So we've had you on the, well, we haven't had you on the show, but we've had Shazow on the show before. Mm -hmm. But let's have a quick little refresh, a little recap of what Shazow is before we go to the exciting new People Love You, Wired Magazine Talks About You, <laughs> yada, yada, yada aspect. Shazow is a location-based friend finder. Mm -hmm. um, the purpose of Shazow is to declare your location. Um, so let's say you're at a coffee shop. You use Shazow to say, hey, I'm at this coffee shop. Shazow will notify all your friends where you're at so that they can come and join you for a cup of coffee. And you can have a real, live, face-to-face -face conversation with your friends. Instead of just being on the internet. Right. Typing, lonely. Exactly. So last time you were on the show, you were in a Portland-only beta. Mm -hmm. And that must have gone very well because now... <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Now we're public. Um, we, uh, yesterday, uh, Thursday, whatever the date would be, um, we, uh, fifth? Fifth? March 5th, fifth? Um, yeah. uh, we, uh, we, we officially uh, opened it up so that anybody could join. There was no invitation required. Um, we really needed, felt like we needed a, a, a good, solid beta period in Portland where people could um, really uh, get together, use it, test it, and make sure that it worked for them. Um, once we felt really solid about that, released the API, then, then we decided to go ahead and say, okay, everybody else, come on in. About how long was it in beta? Um, August 13th was when we went into private beta. Wow. And there was, wasn't there another city that it was available in? We made it available on the West Coast for a little while there. Okay. Um, so didn't really push it a whole lot, but, um, but just kind of made it so that other people could get in and test it out and make sure it works in their cities. And so was South by Southwest kind of the impetus to get it open? Did you want to have it open by then? Yeah, we wanted to get people using it and give people a week or so to play around with it before South by Southwest because what we think is that Shazao is really most useful if people can actually see how it's working and how mm -hmm. it benefits them, mm -hmm. which is really hard to do when you open it up to a new city because it's like one or two people from San Francisco or one or two people from Boise, Idaho or, or wherever. And it's really hard to see the value until you start to see, you know, people actually using it and doing something productive with it. And we actually had an instance of it well, when it opened up, um, Rich Burroughs signed up for it. So I didn't know who he was, but, you know, we, we were seeing him on Shazow and we were seeing him on Twitter and talking about Shazow. And I put something on Shazow about at TSK and he was like, well, I don't know who that, you know, I've never seen that before. I'm going to click on it and see who that is. And he was like, oh, my God, I worked with Todd like 10 years ago at Transport Logic. So he and, and at the same time he was tweeting this, Todd was just telling us, oh, my God, look at this. I worked with this guy <laughs> 10 years ago at Transport Logic. So we were sitting at this, you know, shows up last night at um, Produce Row and talking about this. And this guy shows up like, you know, half an hour later. And he and Todd sit there and talk and catch up on everything that's happened in the last 10 years since they've seen each other. Wow. That's it's it's an example of how itty bitty tiny Portland is. Yeah. And it's a really, really good use of it you can i mean not only i was thinking you find your friends because you go and locate them but in that case it actually found somebody yeah and we you know since we have tags and everything on there you can find people with similar interests and find other people who are interested in you know whatever blogging or php or whatever it is that you're into coffee vegan food and helps you find those people and you know you're more likely to find people that you know within those groups or maybe mm -hmm. just new people that you want to hang out with that you didn't know before so now that it's open worldwide anyone can use it what are the plans you said you opened up the api mm -hmm. 
Um, so from here, um, what we we've been putting a lot of um, emphasis um, in working with the Portland developers um, on building applications to use with Shazao. Um, one of the biggest complaints that we've had so far is that um, there's no iPhone app, there's no Android app. Um, but since we've released the API, a lot of Portland developers have kind of come together and um, have started building some of these applications, um, a lot of which are currently in alpha or, or beta stage. Um, mm -hmm. There are a couple Android apps, there's an iPhone app, um, there's a, a web-based app, there's a, a Don P. Don P's uh, Ice Condor, which pulls in some of the RSS feeds. Um, so there are a lot of... Um, you know, really outstanding developers here in Portland who are already starting to pick that up and embrace it and tailor the um, the mobile experience to their needs. So do you see it going a lot farther with the mobile applications? Because the way I see it, not everyone carries their laptop. I mean, if you're if you're <laughs> someone who goes and works, right. if you're if you're there, there's a word term for it that I'm missing right now. But if, if you don't have an isolated office and you work in coffee shops and you work in offices, um, then yeah, you have your laptop and you're going to be able to tell everyone where you are. But I don't take my my laptop with me. I take my iPhone with me everywhere. Right. But do you, do you see it expanding more and people it having a better functionality for more people? Yeah, it's designed to be a, a mobile application. Um, mm -hmm. it, it really is supposed to be. Um, but we really had to start with, for, with the fundamentals yeah. and to make sure it works on a website, um, to make sure um, that the API is, is rock solid and that everything... Um, is kind of working together with the same platform, the same back end. Um, so doing a lot of mobile development is, is very difficult because there, it introduces a lot of um, um, in, intricacies like mm -hmm. with, within each of the platforms, whether it's an iPhone or, or whatnot. And so it, it makes it a, little, uh, a lot harder to troubleshoot some of the problems that you might run into. Um, whereas on a website, We've been working with websites for so long that we, we kind of know what the bugs are. Yeah. Uh, we know what the, the major problems are. And so if we run into something, we know how to troubleshoot it easily. Um, but most importantly, we kind of, um, I guess we believe that we know how to do the core of Shazelle right. Um, the, we want to handle the basics, which is people and places and mm -hmm. shouts, where a shout is essentially the, um, the intersection of a person and a place. Um, so we really want to do the core of Shazelle right. And we think that, um, th that if we hand over the API for others to develop with, they're going to do things that are going to be just mind blowing and mm -hmm. they're going to be amazing applications and they're going to be do uh, able to do all of those things so much better than we'll be able to do. It's... And that's kind of the Twitter approach as well. Yeah. So one of the things that Twitter's done is they focused really on, um, the back end and they're trying to improve the scalability so that it's a little more stable than it has been in the past and you know they really have focused on the Twitter core and then let the developers develop all the apps so you know Tweety is developed by an individual developer TweetDeck all these applications and a lot of the web services around Twitter have been developed by third-party developers so that's kind of the same approach that we're using and so far it's working fairly well I mean we have you know quite a few people that are starting to do development with the Shazao API and getting back to your early, earlier question about mobile, I think that the mobile piece is going to be really critical for for this to take off yeah. um, in a you know in a bigger way because a lot of people just you know I, I don't mind using mobile dot you know m dot Chazelle on my phone because you know on an iPhone that's fairly easy to do, but for a lot of people that's just not going to be um, not going to be that useful. So we think it's going to be useful for South by Southwest because it's a big iPhone crowd. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that in order to expand past that crowd, we really do need the applications and, and the desktop applications as well. I mean, yeah. how often do you use Twitter from the, the website versus, you know, your tweet deck and other mm -hmm. applications? Yeah, I prefer the applications, but last week it was brought to my attention that that might not always be a good thing. <laughs> um, let me ask, because this week alone, you guys have gotten a lot of attention. You were brought up mm -hmm. on KGW and on Wired. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so we, we put together some release material. So we've been planning this release for quite a while. We originally mm -hmm. thought we were going to do it on Tuesday. We pushed it out a couple of days um, just to give us a little more time and to give the developers a little more time on their applications. And um, you know, I, I basically just put together a, a release for this. So I put together embargoed press release materials that we sent to a number of bloggers, um, including Adam Duvander, who was working at WebMonkey, mm -hmm. which was acquired by Wired. And so we sent it to him, and um, he told us, well, he's not writing for them anymore, but he was going to send it on to somebody he knew 
who and you know along with a recommendation that it be covered. So that's kind of how the, the wired thing happened. And we weren't really expecting it because anytime you send it to somebody and they're like, oh, I don't do that anymore. I'm going to send it to somebody else. You're like, oh, OK, yeah. that, that's not going to work. Um, and, you know, we sent it to Rick and we sent it to a couple other people. And, um, you know, the biggest coverage we had, you know, from a, you know, publicity standpoint was wired. But the interesting thing was that looking at the Google Analytics on our website, mm -hmm. Silicon Florist actually sp sent more traffic to Shazal than the wired article did which I found fascinating. Um, I think a lot more people probably read the Wired article, but they didn't really click through on the link to Shazal because I saw a lot more discussion on Twitter about mm -hmm. the Wired article and a lot of retweets of the Wired article, but it didn't drive that much traffic to our site, which was really interesting. Very interesting. Um, hmm. So more people are likely to click on something if Rick puts it up. Yes, <laughs> exactly. So keep that in mind, people. Yes. Thank you, Rick, for all the times you may have linked anything. <laughs> I really appreciate that. So are you guys going to South by Southwest as Shazal or? Um, I'm probably going as, as both. So mm -hmm. as part of my um, consulting thing and Shazal. So I'm actually moderating a panel on something that has nothing to do with actually anything that I do. It's on um, Open Web, mm -hmm. um, Open Web Foundation. So it's open standards, basically, mm -hmm. that David Recordin is putting together. And he asked me to moderate the panel. So I'm going to be doing that. But the vast majority of what I do at South by Southwest is going to be Shazal related. So what are you guys going to bring to South by Southwest with you? Our pearly whites. <laughs> a lot of smiling and a lot of shaking hands. Yeah. Um, a lot know, of Shazal t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of a kind, baby. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it's interesting. Um, you know, one of the, the decisions we made early on was to, to bootstrap as long as mm -hmm. we could. Um, and so this is kind of one of the, the budget crunch times where um, – it's like, okay, so what, what are we going to do? Are we going to actually produce anything? And um, we're not sure that we are. We're not yeah. sure that we are going to produce anything at the moment. Um, um, I think we're just going to kind of go and, and um, just allow our Portland peeps to really evangelize for us. Um, there's, there's, no better, um, there's no better sales pitch than saying, this worked for me, and I ran into someone, and I met someone that, I, um, that I've been wanting to meet, or, or you know, I met, a met up with a couple people from my hometown. By the use of your service, so so we're really just kind of banking on that that uh, uh, that that we Portlanders are all going to go down and and hopefully uh, shazow it up down there. The best use I think I ever made of shazow is we were making a behind the scenes video for Strange Love Live, and I was looking for people, <laughs> and I wasn't getting. I, I was tweeting. I was like, "Where's everybody? I need you. I need to video you." And no responses. <laughs> so I just went over and shazow. I was like, "Okay, where are they?" Oh, look, two of them in one place, three of them in one place. Let's go, let's go. Everybody run. <laughs> we got in the car, and then Dawn came up and, and saw that we were over there, so she joined us too. But I was like, God, that is useful. <laughs> Normally, I just kind of, you know. people. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's good for stalking people. Oh, look. <laughs> Dawn P, Dawn P, I see you. I know, I know where you are. Okay, so I think uh, Dr. Normal is going to bring something up in a moment. We have something very special that you sent us that... I didn't realize no one's ever seen before. Yes, yes, I can bring that up uh, shortly. <laughs> I was going to ask about, um, so you've opened up the API, mm -hmm. which means that uh, we'll have an iPhone application in a week or two is uh, what we're looking at here. Well, it's, it's hard to say. I mean, that, that's completely out of, out of our I, hands. I, 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 um, uh, Bill Jackson. He asks the leading question. Right? <laughs> uh, we do know that uh, Bill Jackson um, uh, at Waji, W A J I I, Waji. Um, is is working on um, an application and uh, it's it's coming along. Mm -hmm. um, I know that uh, he will, I believe, shortly be looking for um, beta and alpha testers. So. Um, so you can always ping him if you hey, want Bill. to be a part of that. <laughs> I actually you know where to find me. Nice. <laughs> on, on my iPhone in my pocket, I have a prototype of that app. It's not quite fully functional yet, but so yeah. it's, it's actually there. It looks it looks like an application. <laughs> it's it's on my phone. Very cool. Yeah, and then uh, Peter Cowan and um, Matt Gifford are both doing Android applications uh, at the moment. Um, uh, Peter Cowan's is a, a native Android application, and um, Matt Gifford's is. I guess semi-native. It, it uh, really relies on um, PhoneGap, which is a JavaScript library. Um, so, uh, so those are also uh, coming along pretty well too. And Don Park has it all bundled up nicely in Ice Condor. Exactly. exactly. Which I know he just uh, did something new on the main page of the site. 
I haven't, I, I saw that he did today and I haven't gotten a chance to go and look at it yet, but. Yeah, I think he moved the map off of the front yeah. page and he put a description so that instead yeah. of people landing on the map and not knowing what it was, I think he put a description page mm -hmm. in front of it, which is, this is what the project is. This nice. is what it does. And then, you know, you can click through the map. Very nice. So did you want to talk about the development uh, of Shazau uh, and then take a look at the, the graphic the online <laughs> graphic are you ready for that yeah sure yeah so um we we started development back in um october of 2007 um i think mark came to me with the idea um uh probably around mid-september of 2007 and, and we started development around the first week of, of october that year and um we uh one of the the key points that i uh, uh made in development um i was doing all the ui originally um, uh, was to make it as ugly as possible, just to to make sure that um, it was completely functional as is. Things were kind of mm -hmm. in the right place, um, but uh, I really didn't want to be attached to anything, to any of the design or, or un until we brought in a um, uh, a UI person eventually. Um, so um, one of the uh, one of the first things um, that you'll notice is um, uh, on the original mockups is that Shazam was spelled S H I W Z O U instead of O-W. And um, that was the way I had always spelled Shazam uh, beforehand. And so um, that that is the, the first logo there. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> I actually hadn't seen any of these logos until just this week, and we were looking for the, the current one to um, put on the press page. And Ryan sends me sends me this logo, and I, you know I just get a link to a logo that says you know Shazow JPEG or something. I was like, oh okay, cool, thanks. It's like, um, look at the logo. <laughs> we'll just send it out. <laughs> so so these were all uh, as a developer, kind of just uh, you kind of mucking around and yeah, so, in so the, layout, right? <laughs> right. So the <laughs> first two, um, the, the first um, OU um, graphic that you had there um, is is something that I just put together just to have something to, that was clickable up at the top. Um, the second, um, I don't know if I can't see your screen, but, um, the second was where we were, um, well, when we first displayed this logo and, and, and put it out there for a couple people to take a look at, they're like, uh, so Shizu, Shizu, and, and, and so we realized that there was a real problem with, with the name and that we were probably going to have to change it. Um, so we then, uh, switched over to, um, Shazow with a U and a W at the end and just kind of, uh, uh, put them, put brackets around them. Shazow. Uh, Shazow. Shizu um, and just as we were kind of playing with the concept of it and moving to OW, I mean, it's, it seems like so small of a change being one letter. Um, but I mean, when you're talking about branding, it really it's goes a, a long way. It's a big difference. Yeah. So, um, so Shortly afterwards, we um, we gradually uh, embraced uh, the OW and um, brought in a UI designer. And I think his first mock-up um, that he brought, which is the 3D mock-up, uh, is very bubbly, cloudy um, um, kind of logo, uh, was with the OU. And then eventually the um, OW and the, the current Chazal, um logo and brand came about. So where did the name come from? <laughs> the the name actually came from um wine tasting so um i uh, uh a little background on me um i became a cer certified sommelier back in uh 2005 i believe mm -hmm. um i've, I've run winegeeks.com for a number of years and so it was just kind of something i was doing for fun more than anything um and at some point i embraced the word shizau as the moment of elation when when i would just taste an amazing wine and so i would you know use that word maybe once every month and a half two months not very often i mean very seldomly does a wine just like really blow you away mm -hmm. but there would be a couple of times that uh, that one would and i would say shizau and um, when we originally started development, we were we were playing with a, a lot of names. Um, uh, Flock was the first one, but of course, there's you know there's already something called Flock. Yeah. Um, congregate was another one. C O N dot G R E G A T E, mm -hmm. and that just seemed uh, a little too difficult to to, to type in. Um, and so um, one day, I, I I was drinking a glass of wine, and I said Shazam, and I, okay, I think. I think I think this is it, um, and after we realized that the, the 
the domain names were free, then we uh, just kind of picked it up and rolled with it until Doesn't we could it? find something better. But it always comes down to the domain name is yeah, free. Yeah. It'll work. But but when you when when you really look at um, what it means to bring people together, mm -hmm. um, that is that moment of elation that you find in the word Chazelle. Yeah. So, you know, someone, you know, someone that I haven't seen for 10 years and we come together because of this service, Shazow. Yeah. That's it. Do you think Portland is a very friendly place? We don't seem to like to be cornered. No one wants to sit by themselves in a room all day. Do you think that it has greater use here than it would in a city that uh, there are less there are less people that are working on their own, that are consulting, that are working from coffee shops. Is it co-working is the term? Do you think that there are other cities that it would be so productive during the day-to-day -day work time people are looking for coffee shops to work with other people in? Or do you think that that's something that's a Portland staple? A little bit of both. So I think Portland, and I was talking to somebody at Beer and Blog about this today, Portland is very community oriented. Mm -hmm. So it just seems like things that um, are somehow community related tend to work better in Portland than in a, a lot of other places. However, I think there are also a lot of uses for sale that we haven't really even, even started in. So things like, think about um, college students, for example. So where's the best party? Where's everybody hanging out? Where's everybody going to lunch? Mm -hmm. You know, where are you studying? What building are you in? And I think that there could be a really interesting use for it in, you know, in that environment in college campuses. I also think particularly for younger people, um, I also think that the happy hour crowd um, will really take up on it as well. So I, I, I think that there are a lot of a, yeah. other uses for it. I think that probably the the co-working use is probably more common in places like here and in San Francisco and mm -hmm. in places where people do a lot of working together in coffee shops. But I think there are other uses that we'll, we'll see take off more in other cities where that's what they're focused on. I could definitely see the, the college crowd and the happy hour scene mm -hmm. embracing it fully. Mm -hmm. So is there anything else going on with Shazow? Is there anything else that you guys see in the future that you guys want to talk about? We see a lot of things in the future, but um, but we're also willing ball. to say it's <laughs> it's it's very fuzzy, um, in that that what we wanted to to do was to really you know focus on the Shazal core as I said before, um, and then let it go where it needs to go, and and we think that you know by providing the API, and and letting um, developers really embrace it, they're going to create their own stories of what it is, um, you know much like Twitter where Twitter kind of just evolved into this this crazy beast that it is today. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that's that wasn't Twitter's vision, but that's what it became. And so, um, so what we wanted to do was just really keep it simple, keep it focused, um, and then here here it is. Just use it and and do what you want with it. So from less than two years since it was. Uh, innovated since you guys thought of it to now are you pleased with the progress and the timeline that you guys have made um i think um i think yes and i think no um it's um it's very difficult to not be critical of of the amount of time that it took and you know uh it could be perceived as as shizau was really stagnant during like november and december not a whole lot was really rolled out mm -hmm. um and throughout that time i was refactoring and i was rewriting you know huge chunks of code to make it ready for for the api and to just make it so that um that uh that it was going to be a sustainable environment for both developers to work in for us to also continue um working in on the back end so um so yes and no uh, you know, sometimes um, sometimes we question whether or not we should have gone for funding a little bit sooner and not tried to bootstrap it. Um, and then and then we just come to a place, um, and uh, particularly after big launches, where where we kind of take a look back and reflect on it a little bit. And um, I think now, looking back on the launch and the last eighteen months, I feel really good about. Um, the sustainability of the mm -hmm. development process and and um and i guess kind of embrace the patience that it took to make it make it into what it is today 
And I think we reached the goals that we wanted initially. We just did it in a very different way than we had initially planned because we initially thought that we'd roll out to individual cities. And what we found was that it was it was really hard to do that. And we really needed apps for people to be able to, you know, really embrace it. And we really needed um, something that that people could rally around. And I actually, I remember talking to you guys when I first joined Chazelle and I said, I want to launch this at South by Southwest in March. Yep. I said, that's our goal is <laughs> South by Southwest in March. And that's when we want to launch it. So even though we approached it in a very different way, so we thought we would have rolled out to like 10 or 15 cities by now, mm-hmm. but we decided to pull back and not roll out to individual cities, but focus on the API instead, which I think um, in hindsight was like probably the much better move for us. It's not the way that we had intended to do it. But I think it's going to work much better for us in the long run. And I think we've been pretty happy with the way it's worked. So it seems to me that you guys didn't force it into a place it didn't want to be. And you kind of let it grow more organically. And that if you kind of let it tell you what you're doing sometimes. I sound like a hippie when I say that. (laughs) If you let it be what it wants to be, everything's so much better. I don't like it when I sound like a hippie, but I really do <laughs> sincerely mean that. I mean, it really does seem like instead of instead of forcing it into a shoebox and saying, no, Chazelle, you're going to do exactly what I say you're going to do, <laughs> you took more of an interest in how people are going to be using it, and I think that's awesome. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Is, so, so, how, <laughs> so outside of, of that, of the granola factor, um, um, so how how do you see is is there advertising or is there some sort of um linked to certain locations uh, businesses um coffee shops that sort of thing i mean how do you kind of what's the business model? sustain it <laughs> because well, this is be what nice, you're doing now right this is, you're launching, this is what you're doing right? you're no longer at an employer you are now the chazelle man yes I, yeah. oh, I, I left my stable job and stable pay- paycheck last friday correct um oh. so <laughs> Is this, i'll get the extreme close-up here. <laughs> <laughs> um so um our, our basic business model um uh well first of all we need people <laughs> um so we're going to really focus on uh just building chazelle and, and expanding chazelle um as far as well um it can go um, once there are enough people um, embracing and, and using Shazam on a regular basis, um, then the basic business model, um, I, I guess, is a twofold approach. Uh, number one, letting um, uh, business entities take ownership of their place entity on Shazam and, and essentially giving them the, uh, the advertising channel to, uh, to those individuals through the site, through the mm-hmm. API, etc. Um, and secondly, to, um, to sell anonymized data about individuals um, going to these places. So essentially, um, to say, this is the demographical information about mm-hmm. people coming to your place and also other places that they're also interested in um, around, around your area. So to kind of show, um, uh, I guess, uh, the, the, the areas that they flock to or the types of places that that people that go to your business flock to. Um, so hopefully that you as a business owner will get a greater insight into um, to the lives of the people that come into your, your place of business. Because mm-hmm. usually you're too busy working to actually get to talk to them yeah. and to really get to know them on, a, on, a, on an individual level. But the data itself would be um, always aggregated. So it would be things like people who go to the Green Dragon also go to these three places, or people who go to the Green Dragon tend to be, you know, 80% male and, you know, 20% female, or, so it would be... And, like, would, the things that they've tagged themselves with. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, but so, it would all it would always be an aggregate, so it would never be, you know, anything about individual people who, who go to those places. Yeah, anything always personal be, will always be stripped out before yeah. anything happens. Mm-hmm. So, so it's essentially like the Twitter model. It's like you're gaining a lot of valuable marketing data, um, <laughs> a lot of data mining. Yeah. So it, it's, I mean, it's really all about the data. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm I was going to ask if I'm, there was anything else, but I'm it, a little preoccupied. <laughs> the tech episode is over. That's, well, that's, that's, <laughs> it has come to a halt. <laughs> there will be no more tech episode. There will episode be no more evening. tech episode. So, uh, just, I, I, I would think that, uh, what, what, you know, what are you guys looking forward to at South by Southwest next week? It's all about parties. 
Oh, I mean, there you go. let's just be honest. It, it really it's is. A party. It's a big party. It's you know spring break for geeks. So it's you know it's honestly it's a lot of fun. You know I I emphasize the parties just because that's kind of funny. But it's it's just an amazing group of really really smart people doing really cool things. Austin Bar Camp runs right along with it, so that'll be on Saturday. Nice. So I'll probably spend most of Saturday actually skipping South by Southwest and going to Bar Camp. Um, and it's it's just a really really great group of people talking about really interesting things and great sessions and great parties and it's just a hell of a lot of fun. Mm. I'm just sad that I'm not going to be there to get barbecue next year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe next year. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Ryan Don, it was great to have you on here. Please, please, please go to shizow.com, S H I Z Z O W.com. And you can find Don on Twitter at Geeky Girl Dawn and Ryan, Ryan Snyder on Twitter. Thanks for joining us. Thank you much. <laughs>